Welcome back to another Finance Friday episode. I'm your host, Sean Winslow, and this is the Multifamily Money Podcast. What's going on, everyone? You know the drill. Every Friday, we're coming at you with all things personal finance. We share tips, tricks, and different strategies to get your money working for you, both harder and smarter, because we all know it's not what you make, but what you keep. And as you can tell by the title of this show, it is also real estate focused. You know, sometimes we, we talk about things that aren't real estate um, related on Finance Fridays because there's a lot of things that, that come into play when we're talking personal finance that aren't real estate and a lot of important things. But today I wanted to talk about real estate, which obviously, you know, is a, a passion of mine. Um, through Greenbrier Capital Group, we invest in multifamily properties. You know, I don't really pitch that much, but if 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 you're interested in that, Go to Greenbrier CG, CG for Capital Group. So greenbriarcg.com. You can check out what we do. Um, and if you have any interest, you can always sign up to our investor portal and we can we can get a conversation going there to see if you'd ever be interested in one of our future opportunities. But today I wanted to talk about real estate because I feel like there's been a lot of conversation, like where we're at. Obviously, interest rates still climbing, a lot of uncertainty in the market, geopolitical risk. You know, people aren't really sure where things are going, right? And when you're trying to buy a property, there's still the seller expectations still haven't really met market conditions, which then leads to getting extremely low LTV, so loan to value for your debt for acquiring a property, which is smart in this time. You don't want to be over leveraged in this in this period of time, and you definitely don't want to be using any adjustable rate um, type of debt. But that's why I want to talk about it because you know people the question that we see go across the news is like is this a, a real estate bubble bursting, you know, are prices about to fall off a cliff. And so I wanted to do a little research in and see if there's ever been any studies um, in regards to patterns of real estate, you know, markets and cycles and just so happens there have been by, by several people. And there's one that I want to talk about that I I see in a lot of different publications um, backed by a few different people. But the one I want to talk about is Phil Anderson, because for over 25 years, he studied you know economics and markets, specifically real estate markets, as well as others. But he, he does tend to focus on real estate. And I found something really cool. There's a pattern that has repeated itself for hundreds of years. And this is for US markets. I just want to preface that. And I also want to preface that, that I'm not giving any, any type of advice in terms of, you know, I'm not saying this is 100% going to happen or not happen. Just based on what I've read and what's happened in the past, you can then draw a conclusion from that. I just want to share this because I thought it was very interesting. But again, you know, just because it happened in the past doesn't mean it's going to happen exactly the same. But again, patterns tend to repeat themselves and history um, tends to repeat itself. So based on his research, he went back hundreds of years. Um, you know, he had he looks at one public land sales that go all the way back to 1800. And he sees on average that there is an 18.6 year real estate cycle. And he says this generally averages out to 14 years up. So a 14 year up market and then four years down. So a four year down market or recession as, as we call it. Um, and so this is again, specifically for, for US history and you know, you can either look at it from trough to trough or peak to peak. And the cycle has actually never been shorter than 17 years, has never been longer than 21 years, but on average, it's 18.6. And if you look at the years that it was longer, um, both times were due to war. Um, as we know, the military complex or whatever you want to call it, when there is a war, it generally does and will boost economies because government is spending money on their war machine, thereby employing people and pumping money into the economy. So twice that happened where it went longer than 18 
So let's just get into it right here. So if, if you look from eight, 1800 to just into early 1900s, there was that 18 year cycle of, of, of land sales. Um, it's pretty wild to look at that the 18 year timing of the boom bust is just uncanny. It, it, it hit pretty much every time um, throughout that period. And before I really get into it, I just want to break it down to you because it, it's broken down into more than just uh, 14 years up, 14 years down. It's actually broken into years one through seven is um, considered the recovery phase. So this comes right after recession. This is generally when you know there's still a lot of uncertainty in the market and it's the, the brave and sophisticated that first take the first steps the first, and they make the first investments because they, they realize that you know the fundamentals are still there for the investment for real estate, right? And prices are, are a very good price to make the purchase. So the few um, start making investments in the recovery phase. And then as that comes to the end of that, that seven-year period, other people are catching on, right? And, and they see others that are actually making money in this market, and they're not as fearful anymore. And that leads to years seven to 14. That is called the explosive phase. And that's where, you know, fundamentals are just out the door and, and people just feel they can't lose and prices just keep going up and up. So people feel like, well, they're, why would they stop? Um, and then that leads to the, the two years at the end of that seven to 14 year period. Um, so years 13 and 14, they call that the winner's curse. Um, and you know, it, it is exactly what you think it is. The winner's curse is people think that it's never going to go down, that it always goes up, and you're just going to keep winning. And then after that period in years 14 through 18, that is what is known as the recession phase. That's when prices crash. And generally during that winner's curse phase, asset prices are obviously overvalued, but they're also highly leveraged, which is kind of, we're getting close to that period right now. And so, that's why there's huge price crashes in years 14 through 18, because not only are the values of the properties highly overvalued, but they're also highly over leveraged, which then kind of exacerbates the issue. So it's just very easy to look at. And, and so let's, let's look at a few years. You know, some of us younger people won't really know some of these years and be able to relate, but but those around my age will definitely be able to relate to recent ones, um, such as you know, 08. So let's take a look at that first one through seven, the recovery phase. So years that would play into that would be 1955, 1975, 1993, 2011. And then the following seven years, um, years seven through 14 are the explosive phase. Those are years like 1972, 1989, 2007. Um, so we're all very familiar with those years and, and kind of the, the start of those periods, if we, if we go back a little bit, would be 1961, 1981, 2001, and then leading up to those years of 1972, 1989, and 2007. And the, the, the last two years of those periods. So 0706 um, would be the winner's curse. Um, and then we drop down into a recession. And from 07 to about 2010 to 2011 is the recession. And then from there on, it climbs back up and repeats itself. So think about that. Um, so we're talking about 2001. We start the recovery phase. You know, we had that the dot com bubble um and which which did lead to some pain in the in the real estate market as well. And this econ economist uh well this individual, Phil Anderson, he also says that the mark the stock market tends to be a leading indicator, meaning you know, it tends it tends to fall first before the real estate, and then it tends to make after everything's fallen. It tends to make gains before real estate as well. It, it tends to lead 
the recovery phase. And, and we can definitely see that. So think about that. From 2001 up until 2007, real estate was just going gangbusters. You know, for those of you that have seen the movie The Big Short, there's that scene where Carell's character goes down to Florida. Um, Steve Carell's character goes down to Florida to see, you know, what this is all about. And he sees what's going on. You know, he meets uh, lenders, brokers that are talking about ninja loans, no income, no job um, loans. And where they joke and saying, yeah, if you can breathe on a glass, we'll give you a loan. He meets individuals, a stripper, let's put it, because that's who she was, that has six homes with adjustable rate mortgage that are all about to adjust. And he, he knows it's a bubble. Um, so just think about that from, from that 2001 to 2007, especially in those last two years where everyone just thinks they can't lose. And then we know what happens in 08, 09. It goes, you know, bust. And then from about that time period to about 2010, 2011 is a recession. And then 2011 onward is the recovery. So we're currently in the explosive phase based on this theory. So if, if we take a look, 14 years in from 2011 would put us at 2025, where the last two years, 24, 25 would be the winner's curse. We're obviously about to go into 23. And now many people may, you know, argue that we already, you already feel like we're definitely dipping into a recession. Um, again, it could be a little shorter, but the pandemic, which is actually, if we look back at the Spanish flu, which was um, from 1919 to 1921, uh, 50 million people died from Spanish flu. And what happened after that? It was the biggest bull market of all time um, during that time. And it led to what is known as the Roaring Twenties. And then we all know what happened after that. So there's kind of similar things at play here. You know, after this pandemic, we saw asset prices across all asset classes just explode from real estate, stocks, crypto. It just exploded. Um, and valuations were at all time highs. And so, if based on this, it would lead you to think that we still have, by the end of this year, two more years to go. 23, 24, and that puts us in the 25 where it's supposed to go bust. Now, again, it's it's been as short as 17 years in the past. So I just want to get here and share that, get on and share this with you all because I thought it was very interesting when I looked into it. Again, I'm not saying this will or will not happen, but I always like to look at patterns. I like to look at history. And when you can look back hundreds of years and see this has repeated itself, um, and that when you look back from 1800 all the way till present, the average period between peaks and troughs is 18 years, you definitely have to take that into consideration. So this is called the 18-year economic cycle. And again, that should put us about 2025 20, for the bust to come. Um, and some of you might be be wondering, like, well, are we in a recession? Are we heading into a recession now? The market's, you know, down over twenty percent. We're seeing interest rates higher than we've seen them in decades. You know, valuations have gone through the roof, and now they're starting to um, <clears throat> recede. We have utilities going through the roof. Um, unemployment people are starting to get laid off, and these are all solid factors. Um, but if you look back, there tends to be a little dip and then last hurrah and then boom. And, you know, recently we've seen the stock market go up um, after, after receding. And I think we could see that as well, depending on what happens with the Fed, how much they keep pushing rates. Once that dust settles and people start getting back into the market, I think that's when we'll really know. Um, cause I know after, with talking to brokers and talking to operators and, and sellers and buyers, 
it seems that's what's happening right now. You know, the people that are forced to sell are going to sell right now, but everyone else is just kind of biding their time. The ones that can hold on to stuff are doing so, and they're they're trying to wait. Um, they're hoping for next year, early next year, to be able to get back in and put their property on the market. But for this time, they want the dust to settle. So, guys, if this is going to repeat itself, look for a bust in about end of twenty twenty four, beginning of twenty twenty five. That's probably when it will come if this cycle repeats itself. All right, everybody. I just want to get here and share this. I thought this was very interesting. So it's the 18-year economic cycle. Just type in Phil Anderson, 18-year economic cycle, and just dig into it. Um, and yeah, it's it's just really interesting. So if we look at Prior real estate peaks, 73, 89, and then obviously the big run up to 2007. And now we have a big run up into the early 2020s. So will it repeat itself? And is it coming soon? So yes. Um, it's just very interesting, guys. So if we just look at it, real houses, prices peaked in 73, 89, 2009. Um, the lows were in 58, 77, 96, and about you know, 11, 12 area. And so this average keeps playing itself out over and over again. And there's a good chance it could happen again. All right, everybody. I hope you got some value out of this. As always, if you did, please share it with someone who you think could get value as well, because that's how we get in front of more eyes and ears. You know, don't pay for any any type of advertising don't promote it i leave that up to to you guys to do that and get it in front of the right ears and eyes for those that could get some value and again if you haven't left the rating or review please do so that also helps the show as well all right everybody as always easy doesn't pay well and instant gratification is self-destructive so not only get out there and work hard for your money but have your money work hard for you so we can all get out there and create the lives of our dreams. And this is coming out right after Thanksgiving. So just be thankful and grateful for the lives that we have and the ability to create the lives that we want. All right, everybody. I'll catch you on the next one.